Anything Goes, currently performing at the Barbican, is the best musical performance I've seen in a long time. Maybe the best ever. And I've seen a lot. And it's down to one person, Sutton Foster. This is Sutton Foster's first London appearance. I guess Broadway audiences know all about her qualities. But in this review, I'm going to pick out the five key moments in which she showed she has what it takes to launch this show into the musical stratosphere. Ah, that's not to play down the importance of Kathleen Marshall, who directed and choreographed the original Broadway production and gave Sutton Foster the vehicle to show off her talent. Or of the support Ms Foster receives from Robert Lindsay and others. Nor can we ever forget the foundation stone of Cole Porter's songs. Sutton Foster very nearly didn't appear. The part of nightclub singer Reno Sweeney was due to be played by Megan Mullally, but after she dropped out with an injury, Ms Foster, uh, the original Tony Award-winning Reno, was drafted in. Well, Megan Mullally's bad luck is our good fortune. That's my one-minute review, but keep watching while I tell you about those five key scenes in which Sutton Foster shows why she is the leading contender for this year's Olivier Award for Best Actress in a Musical, and also how other members of the cast measured up. And what makes anything goes despite a cobbled together plot, a surprisingly topical musical. Before I begin my full review of Anything Goes at the Barbican, let me set the scene. Nearly all the action takes place on the deck of an ocean liner, with interior scenes rolled on or dropped in as needed. So we nearly always have in view Derek McLean's phallic funnels and vaginal doors and portholes, never letting us forget that this is a musical that's at least as much about sex as romance. And the parallel lines of those smokestacks prepare us for the precision of the chorus lines. After a jolly overture in which the conductor, Stephen Ridley, wears a naval officer's white hat, the top of which is picked out by a spotlight, and then a short scene that kicks off the ludicrous and frankly irrelevant plot, we meet Reno Sweeney for the first time. She sings I Get a Kick Out of You. Now in modern musicals, which is to say mainly those written after Rodgers and Hammerstein changed everything, the songs tend to follow and enhance the story. In Cole Porter's heyday in the 1930s, it was more a case of the story being built around the songs. So we have this classic love song sung by Reno to Billy Crocker in which she says she's in love with him. But in no time at all, she's helping him snare the real love of his life Hope Harcourt. And even though it seems like her feelings for Billy are invented simply so she can sing this song, and like all the other songs in this musical, we have heard it a thousand times before, you very quickly realise that something extraordinary is happening here. She's putting in phrasing, pauses, emphases that make it personal. She's singing like she really doesn't understand why she has feelings for this young man. She forces this on every other song she sings, and she does have nearly all the best songs, to mean something in the context of the show. It's like hearing the song for the first time, because she's acting the song. After more nonsense, in which Billy decides to stow away on an ocean liner bound for Britain so that he can court hope, only to discover she's engaged to an aristocratic Englishman, Reno gives him a confidence boost. She tells him, you're the top. It may start as Reno trying to cheer up Billy, but it ends as a competition between them to find ever more bizarre compliments. So we begin with the over-the-top, you're the Nile, you're the Tower of Pisa, you're the smile on the Mona Lisa, but we end with your Pepsodent. Now, this is a comic song, but Sutton Foster takes the comedy to a new height thanks to her facial expressions. Puzzlement at some of the comparisons. Triumph when she finds yet another rhyme. She is indeed the nose on the great Durante. Billy and Hope, played by Samuel Edwards and Nicole Lily Baisden, have a moment, uh, as does Gary Wilmot, who doesn't have a lot to do, but what he does is reliably comic. Then Sutton Foster and Robert Lindsay have a number together. In fact, friendship is their only duet. Usually the part of Moonface Martin, a gangster disguised as a priest, is a relatively minor character in a subplot. But in this production, and all credit here to the director Kathleen Marshall, he becomes a lead. On Broadway, the great Joel Grey took the part. In London, 
we and Sutton Foster are blessed with Robert Lindsay. Sometimes scenes Mr Lindsay can do anything. I last saw him extracting tears as a legendary Hollywood cameraman suffering from dementia in prison. But, of course, he is a skilled comic actor, as he showed uh, when he was the star of the revival of Me and My Girl. His greatest quality is his understanding of how to work an audience. So the patter from Robert Lindsay is pure vaudeville and transforms a comic song into comedy genius with jokes about it being a shame Sutton Foster's West End debut is in the city of London and not the West End. And if you're not familiar with London theatre, it's true that while the size of the venue and of the show itself are West End, it's geographically speaking somewhat to the east. And what's great about Sutton Foster here is that she sails with him on this almost stream of consciousness so that they really do seem like friends. Then there's the climax of the first act, the song Anything Goes. If there's a serious theme to this musical, and there probably isn't, it's that standards of good and bad and right and wrong have been swept away in contemporary society and that anyone can become a celebrity, including gangsters like Moonface Martin and public enemy number one, Snake Eyes Johnson, whom Billy Crocker is mistaken for, just as in today's celebrity culture. And this suits Cole Porter's cynicism and gives us the song and show title. By now we've already tasted the quality of Kathleen Marshall's choreography, uh, but in this one the energy is fantastic. Sutton Foster's energy is off the scale, and so is her dancing as she leads the stage-filling chorus through a synchronised tap routine that just builds and builds. It achieved a really almost unknown standing ovation at the end of Act One. So, Act Two opens with Blow Gabriel Blow, a song that absolutely doesn't fit. I mean, why on earth would a nightclub singer sing a gospel song? Well, apparently it's because she was once an evangelist. OK, why not? For quality of choreography and performance, it takes up where anything goes left off. The number starts with Sutton Foster in a preacher's outfit, but before long she and her troop have shed their white robes to reveal red, devilishly skimpy showgirl dresses that show Sutton Foster also has a fantastic figure. And when the dancers sway rhythmically in a close group, it's like a cauldron. And again, Sutton Foster is right at the centre of it, setting the stage on fire. Remember that the part of Reno was written for Ethel Merman and has been played in the past by no less than Patti Lupone and Elaine Page. Well, we can add Sutton Foster to that pantheon of musical stars. The next role is alongside Hugh Jackman in The Music Man on Broadway, but I really hope after this success that we'll be seeing more of her on this side of the Atlantic. Well, those are my five moments to remember, but there's a lot more to enjoy in this production. A delightful version of The Gypsy in Me, in which the English Lord Oakley, played by Hayden Oakley, different spelling, reveals a previously unexpected passionate side, leading to a comic tango with Sutton Foster, including an impressive vertical split from her. And there's the comedy song, Be Like the Bluebird, which gives Robert Lindsay a brilliant solo moment. Oh, and then there's Carly Mercedes Dyer, who recently acted everyone else off the stage as Shug Avery in the Lester Kerr production of The Colour Purple, and who here gives the raunchiest version imaginable of Buddy Beware. Without Sutton Foster and Robert Lindsay in support, this production would still be amusing, energetic and visually impressive, but it's because of them that I give... Anything goes at the Barbican. Five stars. I hope you found this review useful and uh, interesting. If you did and you want to be the first to know about my future reviews, please subscribe, pressing the button below. And if you want to read my reviews, go to the website, oneminutetheatrereviews.co.uk. Thank you for watching.